I am Chrissy Woods. I am the hospital epidemiologist from Mount Sinai West, the medical director of infection prevention at Mount Sinai West. I'm also an adult infectious disease physician here at West and at Morningside and the associate chief medical officer from Mount Sinai West. I think that as long as you are vaccinated and your friends are vaccinated, it is okay to give your friend a hug. A very brief interaction like that is very unlikely to transmit COVID. And I think we're all at a place now where we're happy that the vaccines are here and we can start having some of that um, momentary contact with the people that we've really missed over the last uh, 14 months. So what it means to be fully vaccinated really depends on which type of vaccine you received. Um, for the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, it means that you've received both doses of the vaccine and that you're at least two weeks out from that last dose, from that second dose. Um, for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it means that you've received the single dose that is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and that you're at least two weeks out from that. And the reason that there's a distinction made for that is that uh, we do know that it takes our bodies some amount of time to produce the antibodies that are necessary to protect us. And through the studies that were done while the vaccines were developed, we've learned that it takes a certain amount of time to get to that optimal level that you've seen reported in the news of protection. And that really starts to happen once you've reached that two week mark after your last dose of your vaccine. It is possible to contract COVID-19 after you've received the vaccine. Remember, the vaccines are not 100% effective, even though they are incredibly effective. Um, we are very excited about how good they are, but they're not 100%. So it is possible to get it. You also have to remember that there are some people who have differences in their immune system and they don't necessarily react as strongly to the vaccine. So it might be slightly less effective in those people. Um, and so it is definitely possible to contract um, COVID, although it should be much, much less likely in the setting of being vaccinated. So it is important to take those precautions because you don't always know what the health problems are, the people that are around you. And there's just a certain amount of civic responsibility that we have to each other. Um, none of us live completely isolated. And certainly I think over the last 14 months, we've all really felt what it is like to have to isolate ourselves from the people that we care about. And so we just need to be careful about the fact that there are still people who may be eligible for vaccine and haven't gotten it for whatever reason. Um, there are still gonna be people in the community who aren't eligible like children. Um, and so we really still have a duty to protect those amongst us that either haven't gotten the vaccine or can't yet get the vaccine or maybe can't get it at all. Since we don't know yet whether a vaccinated person can actually go on to transmit COVID if they were to get it to somebody else, we really do need to continue to be careful with those other individuals until we have that answer. So this goes back again to the to the last question, which is that we don't have perfect information yet as to whether or not people who are vaccinated can possibly spread COVID if they were to get it. And so that's why it's still important to wear masks in certain settings, even if you are vaccinated. So I think that's a very important question that's come up for a lot of people. And certainly I am in one of those households. My two young children are not eligible for vaccination. My husband and I are vaccinated and a lot of our friends are in the same situation. I think the important thing to think about there are three specific things. The first is consider the people that you're going to be interacting with and try to figure out if their activities are similar to yours and whether or not you're comfortable with them. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, we're all at different places with what we feel comfortable doing and certainly things have opened up and have allowed us to do a lot more. And so, um, you know, I have friends who are much more comfortable going out to eat, um, who are doing a little bit more socializing. And then I have friends on the other end of the spectrum who are still really uncomfortable with doing that. And I think that when you're looking to um, bring another family into sort of your little circle, you need to think about where they are on that spectrum and whether or not that's something that's safe for you. The other thing to consider is um, the health of your children, obviously, and if they're you know, very healthy and they don't have any underlying medical problems and then are not likely to get very sick with COVID, that is a good situation and certainly one where you can consider them mixing. And then think about where you're doing these activities. We know that being outside is safer than being inside. Um, the CDC does say that you can invite vaccinated individuals into your home, even if 
you're in a situation where you have children at home who are unvaccinated as long as they're at low risk for severe COVID. Um, and what I will say is that from um, an epidemiologic standpoint, um, from an infectious disease standpoint, I would just say that if you have the option to do this outdoors, then I would suggest that, that you do that. I think it is safer to be outdoors. The air moves more freely. There's a bit more space and it certainly would be a safer situation for your children. Again, people who are, who are vaccinated are much less likely to spread COVID. And so it's not that you're inviting someone into your home who is at very high risk, but again, if you can take some steps to mitigate that, why not do that? I think that's a really difficult question. Um, a lot of that is going to have to do with so many different factors. Um, the first is how quickly people are going to be vaccinated and that includes down to um, in the youngest members of our society. Part of that will also include how well the rest of the world does with vaccination. So there are certain countries that have really done an excellent job of, of being vaccinated and that doesn't necessarily just have to do with their infrastructure. It also has to do with, with the financial means that a lot of countries do or don't have and, and how they've been able to obtain vaccine. So that's gonna be another really important piece to the puzzle. Um, we definitely live in a very global world where people do a lot of traveling and until we really have enough immunity worldwide, um, this is going to continue to be a problem. The other thing that is going to contribute to all this is, is just a better understanding of what's gonna happen with COVID seasonally, whether we're gonna have these continued spikes and, and continued um, higher times where it's um, more common in our community, like in the winters. Um, so it remains to be seen if that's where it's going to go. And I think some of us feel that to some extent we're going to have it in, in the background. What we do hope will happen is that eventually there will be enough people that have been vaccinated and we'll get to a place where we're not gonna be so concerned that this, it's going to cause the really severe disease that we've been seeing in the news and in the headlines and that eventually it will cause more um, mild disease. And in doing that, we'll be able to, to live with it and we'll be able to start doing some of the things that we really enjoyed doing before the pandemic started. It's less risky to be masked while outdoors um, because when you're outdoors, there's better ventilation. So the air can really move. The amount of virus, if someone were to have it, can become diluted by all the free, freely moving air that's around. And that's the theory. But you also have to remember that part of thinking about being unmasked outdoors is if you're unmasked outdoors in a really, really large crowd, um, the protection is not going to be as good in that situation. So you're much safer choosing to take your mask off outdoors if you have the ability to have a little bit of distancing. And, and again, in a space where air is moving very freely. I think the masking question also comes back to how good we do with just getting vaccine out there, getting um, immunity, whether it's through natural immunity to the disease, whether it's through the vaccine. Um, and I think we're gonna learn a lot over the next little while. Uh, a lot of the rules are being relaxed around um, you know, masking for people who are vaccinated. A lot of the rules are being relaxed about how many people you can have in a certain area. Um, you know, New York has made plans to reopen in just less than two weeks from now. And I think we're gonna really learn from that um, what we can and can't do. Hopefully we'll see that people who are vaccinated and, and as long as we continue to build up the vaccine rates, we'll get to a place where we'll be able to get rid of those masks. But I do really think that the next little while is going to be an important learning curve for us all, not only in the city, but nationally and globally as to, as to when we can finally maybe get to a place where we don't need our masks. Or maybe we'll find that we're gonna encourage mask use during certain times of the year when the disease is more prevalent and not encourage it at other times. So I think that's a stay tuned kind of moment.